Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a, a wonderful uh, discussion already last time when we talked about the Noahic Covenant. Um, I went a little bit further today and I wanted to get into the Abrahamic Covenant and what that covenant means for us. Again, the whole thing was born out of what we see right now in Israel and that just a devastating um, situation right now and everybody is up in, and having a lot of questions and just not knowing the answers and yet we know that from God's word that God has a special eye on Israel and on the development of them as a nation and all the oppression, all, all, the, all that spirit that's coming against them somehow, that is prophetic, that has all been in scripture already. And there is a development that is taking place right now that directly, it's not that we are sitting thousands of miles away and this does not regard us, it regards us spiritually because there's a spiritual connection and that connection is through covenants and through covenant, what we call covenant theology. And leading up, we are part of the new covenant right now in this fifth, the new covenant. But our spiritual heritage is Israel and God. Um, when he is bringing in the, the, the full wave of uh, Jews into the kingdom by the awareness that Jesus indeed was the Messiah, God's son, God. Um, and so that fulfillment is going to take place. And we see all those events right now. But covenant is very important because it kind of just leads us through and it makes us aware of what spiritual heritage we have. And last week I talked about the first one, the first covenant that God did in the Bible was with Noah. So after he had to uh, um, um, just clear the table, basically, the entire world, and he said Mo um, Noah found favor in the eyes of God because he was a, a righteous man. He walked with God. And so God started over, and then he says, go out and multiply and fill the surface of this earth again. And as everything got scattered again, and then you have the good, you have the blessed, and then also you have what the enemy kind of brought in already through sin, through a fallen creation. You have that. I remember I, I, I talked about this parable of the weeds today and this again was from Matthew chapter 13 verse 24 uh, uh, through 30 if you want to read that but um, just to stay with the covenant right now and then out of this again it came to a place where God handpicked a person again and that was Abraham See, God already put it in his father, Terah, and this is all from uh, Genesis chapter 12. If you just want to follow along with it, or in chapter 11, you kind of have the descendants of uh, Terah. You have the sons and how he tried to uh, go back into that place, that, that place of blessing where God said to, to Shem that uh, he is going to basically rule this entire region and that it's going to get blessed and everybody else is going to serve and, and they are from this lineage, right? And so they wanted to go back to that blessing, to that lineage again, but then somehow Terah, they settled halfway and maybe Terah was already, as we can read, advanced in years and they had a lot of livestock and family with them, so they settled halfway. And then, out, but even to go and settle halfway, they already left one of the sons behind. And then, and then as Terah passed away, um, and um, Haram passed away, and so already earlier, but and then only Abraham and Lot started continuing, and then they came to that place of promise to uh, where, where where they're supposed to dwell, and then it didn't look quite like. Uh, like a whole lot because there was a famine in the land and everything was uh, probably just withered and, and dry and there was no rain, nobody had food anymore and people were complaining and, and Abraham probably thought to himself, Lord, what, what did you bring us here for? This this is not the promise that you were talking about. So he had to go and take pack everybody up again and just continue down to Egypt and back. And so through all those life circumstances and then they got so big that, that even Lot, the last family member had to separate from him. And Moses was willing, um, sorry, Abraham was willing every step of the way to say farewell and to leave things behind. Every step of the way, he was willing to leave things behind just to be in God's will. And I, I find it very telling because even God gave him a promise initially that set him on the right track. Right? God didn't make a covenant with him at this point. He just told him to go. Again, not a road map, but he wants to be our tour guide. We would talk about that, that if you have a, a cool example. And then it came when, when he was then finally, when he was really, when he was alone. Um, 
then every um this is in verse 14 chapter 13 verse 14 and then the lord said to abraham after lot had separated from him so it's like god hasn't told abraham go separate from him he, he makes all his decisions kind of in the natural and just trying to do the, the the wisest thing that he can possibly do but then in the end when all of that family is kind of scattered when he knows that he is still in the will of god what god wanted him to do then the covenant comes and then um this coming sunday i'm going to be talk more uh, a little bit more about this covenant, what the elements of the covenant, the sign of the covenant, the blood that's again involved in this covenant. But for now, as you talk about even just this leading up to that promise and leading up to a covenant, you know, because I it always puzzles me when I think about there is billions of people on this planet, right? We are billions of people, and yet it says God's eyes go to and fro the entire surface of the earth to look for those whom he can strengthen and it, it makes me wonder sometimes what makes his eyes pass over a lot of people and where we find favor in his eyes and it's not because of talent it's not because of our skills it's not because of um even calling because everybody is called but only few are chosen right this hand i'm talking about this hand picking but what is it that makes god eye rest on us and it has something to do with this childlike faith, with his faithfulness toward him, where God can just um, take us as we are, but make something where he can fulfill his plan in our life, those yielding vessels uh, that we ought to be. And I just wanna encourage you right now in the core group, as, as you talk about even, not, not about the Abrahamic covenant itself, but leading up to it, are we in the right place where God can would handpick us? I want to put this challenging question out to you. Um, if you maybe go around in the core group and just ask yourself this question, if God's eyes would be looking for a person right now to maybe do something or for a, a calling, um, would his eyes rest on you? And if you could not wholeheartedly say, I, I think so, then ask yourself the question, what, what are the things that are maybe a baggage or a hindrance or a old baggage, maybe from the past or maybe family relationships or friendship relationships that are still not in, in all in order and okay. But what are those things that might be holding you back or make you settle only halfway where what God wants to fulfill his calling in our life? He wants to handpick us. Are we available? So just pose that question and then in the end, just pray. I, I think we all can do better. It's not that once God is all figured out, if you have, please call me. I want to know it too. But um, just share and encourage each other mutually because we're all on this journey together. And then pray for one another that God's eyes would find favor with us because of how devoted we are to him again i said it's not an accomplishment for god that makes him pick us it's our devotion to him that makes him aware of who we are and what we carry in our hearts so god bless you we'll see you next sunday